Hello. Uh, now we are going to uh, study an analysis of the old man and the sea. After completing this lesson, you should be able to analyze the themes, symbols, and style of the novel and sketch the characters major and minor. Having been acquainted with the story of the old man and the sea, you will be exposed in this lesson to a critical analysis of the novel. Here we are going to study the characters, the themes, the motives and the symbols of the old man and the sea. And before that we have to warm up and to warm up we have to answer these questions. What's the lesson you learn from the story? You have watched the story and you understand the summary and the plot of the story. What, what's the lesson you got? Um, does the novel end with Santiago's victory or defeat? Now we are going to sketch the characters. We will start with the central character of Santiago, the old man himself. He is the hero of the story. And he is an old Cuban fisherman who is a perfectionist. Despite his precise methods, he has no luck at sea for 84 days. And he is humble in his dealings with others, yet takes great pride in his work and himself. He loves baseball and dreams of lions on the beach. Santiago is alone, except for the company of Madeline. The sea, the fish, the stars are his friends. Santiago exhibits exceptional determination and endurance in the face of physical and psychological pain. Although he loses the Marlin to sharks, the entire struggle constitutes a spiritual victory. So he lost the physical battle, but he won the spiritual one. The second character, main character, is Madeline, the boy. The young boy who is a disciple of Santiago and he takes care he takes care of him. His parents prefer that he works with more a successful fisherman, but as he as he becomes his own man, he chooses to be loyal to Santiago himself. He doesn't want to go with another fisherman. He is Santiago's only human friend and he looks up to Santiago as a mentor and father figure. That means he is a trainee to the trainer and his trainer is Santiago. The next character, main character, is not human being. He is, it is a fish and that fish is the marlin. The marlin is the big fish it's about 18 feet, that Santiago desperately wants and needs to catch. Like Santiago, it never accepts defeat. It resists and resists for three days. Santiago admires the marlin beauty and endurance and considers it a noble adversary and a brother, telling the fish repeatedly that though he loves him, that means Santiago loves the fish, he must kill him. Minor characters, we have a number of minor characters in the novel, the first of whom is Bidrico. Who is Bidrico? Bidrico is another fisherman in Santiago's village. Santiago gives him the Marlin's head at the end in gratitude for supplying him with newspapers that report the baseball scores. The next character is Martin. He is the owner of the seaside cafe, the Terrace, its name. Martin provides Santiago with meals during his unlucky streak.
Again, the next minor character is not human beings. They are the sharks, the shovel-nosed sharks. The shovel-nosed sharks are Santiago's vicious antagonists. Although Santiago manages to kill most of them, they tear apart the Marlin's body and leave Santiago devastated. These are the sharks. Now we have finished the characters, we'll move on to the themes, the themes of the novel, the central messages conveyed by the writer, Ernest Hemingway. The first theme is resistance to defeat. As a fisherman, Santiago is a man fighting against defeat. Santiago never gives in to defeat. He sails farther into the ocean. He struggles with the marlin for three days and nights. He endures physical pain and exhaustion. And he fights a hopeless battle against the sharks. So these four instances prove that Santiago never gives and to defeat. Santiago used tactics to fuel his resistance to defeat. What are those tactics? He recalls memories of his youthful strength when he was young and strong. He relies on his pride, his pride of himself, and he compared himself to his hero, Gio Di Maggio. This is an actual character. Santiago represents every man's struggle, so his character is symbolic. He represents every man's struggle to survive against death. Yet, through Santiago's struggle, Hemingway makes the case that escape from death is not the issue. Santiago observes near the end of his struggle that a man can be destroyed but not defeated. In other words, victory over difficulties is not what defines man. Rather, it is man's struggle against difficulties, even when he knows it is inevitable and useless that defines him. So, what defines you as a man is not whether you win or you lose. It is a struggle in itself. So struggle here is an end in itself. The more difficult the struggle, the more powerfully a man can prove himself, and that is Santiago. The next theme is pride. Pride is often depicted as a negative attribute that causes people to suffer a terrible fall. So, do you think here the sin of pride was responsible for the shark attack of Santiago? Because if we presuppose that Santiago was afflicted with the sin of pride, so, why? Because pride caused him to go out into the ocean beyond the usual boundaries, and and it I mean and, and to kill the marlin. It was caused by pride. In fact, pride in Santiago's case was not negative. His pride is a motivating force that spurs him to greatness. How? Fishing at all age is a feature that marks his greatness caused by his sense of pride. The second is surviving three days at sea. Again, it is caused by his pride. And battling the marlin and then the sharks. Pride never makes him try to be more or less than he is. He believes that if you borrow today, tomorrow you will beg. But he never wants to beg. He wants to earn his livelihood by himself. He 
His pride can be seen as an effort to be the best man and fisherman that he can be. Santiago achieves the crucial balance between pride and humility, that humility was not disgraceful and it carried no true loss of pride. That is the theme of pride. We'll move on to the theme of friendship. Again, friendship is a theme in the All Man and the Sea. How? The friendship between Santiago and Manolin plays a critical part in the novel. In return for Santiago's mentorship and company, Manolin provides physical support, bringing him food and clothing and helping him load his skiff. He also provides emotional support, encouraging Santiago throughout his unlucky streak. Santiago refuses to accept defeat because he knows Manolin would be disappointed in him. So in most of his struggle, he was motivated by his friendship to the boy, and he doesn't want the boy to be disappointed by him as his mentor. It is Manolin's friendship that breaks Santiago's loneliness. In addition, he has imaginary friendship with the nature. Marlin and the sea and stars, this all represent nature. In the end, these friendships, both real and imaginary, they nurture him. The next theme is Youth and Age. The title of the novel, The Old Man and the Sea, suggests the thematic role age plays in the story. Santiago and Manolin represent the old, man, the old and the young. What one lacks, the other provides. So the relationship is a relationship of harmony. Manolin provides food, clothing, and encouragement to the old man, while Santiago, in turn, has wisdom and experience to endow to the boy. In old age, he struggle. In old age, struggle becomes meaningful, and Santiago finds strength in remembering his youth, which is symbolized by the dream of the lions on the beach that he sees in his dreams. The next theme is man and nature, man against nature. The story records, records man's relationship with nature. The sea is dangerous with its sharks and weather, but it also sustains Santiago by providing food. The marlin is not an adversary, but a brother to love. Their relationship hints at the fundamental law of nature that unites man and animal. Death is necessary and fosters new life. So in order to live, Santiago has to kill the shark, uh, sorry, has to kill the marlin. And in order to live, again, the sharks has to eat from the marlin. So, this is the motive of life that comes out of what? Out of death. We have finished the themes, now we'll discuss the symbols. The first symbol is the marlin itself. The marlin instance is Santiago's worthy opponent, that means worthy foe or enemy. Struggling against such an opponent brings out the best in an individual, that is, courage, endurance, and love. At the same time, Santiago comes to see the Marlin as an alter ego. So when he struggles against the Marlin, he was in struggle with himself. Santiago's struggle with the Marlin is in fact a struggle to face and overcome his own weaknesses. The next symbol is that of the lions. Santiago had three dreams of lions on the beaches of Africa. What do these dreams suggest? The lions symbolize Santiago's lost 
youth as well as his pride. Why? Because linguistically a group of lions is called pride. So Santiago's love for the lions, which are fierce predators, also mirrors his relationship with the marlin, whom he loves and kills for his survival. The next symbol is that of the shovel-nosed sharks. The shovel-nosed sharks can be seen as symbolizing the destructive forces of nature. Some have even argued that the sharks symbolize literary critics, whom Hemingway saw as feasting on the creations of true artists without actually creating anything themselves. So if we have to consider this, then it would be autobiographical elements in the novel. The next symbol is that of Dimaggio. He is a real baseball player who was partially handicapped. He often figures in the old man's waking thoughts and dreams. Dimaggio inspires him with the determination to win in spite of handicap. The image of the baseball hero playing in pain gives Santiago renewed vigor and energy to bear his own pain. Have finished symbols and we'll move on to allegory. Allegory means symbolic story. So, what is this novel symbolic of? Santiago's struggle is an extended metaphor for the human condition. That means how we all struggle and take risks in a sea of troubles. The novella is viewed as a symbolic sto story in which sea represents life, old man represents every one of us, the marlin represents opportunities, and sharks represent adversities. Now the style in the novel, <coughs> the point of view, the novel is written in the third person limited omniscient point of view, focuses on Santiago help us to understand his character and emotions. It is also, I mean we have a, a feature of the style in the novel is the introspective monologue which was used when Santiago is alone on the sea. It allows the reader to sympathize with the hero. We have also flashbacks when his wrestling match with the El Negro when he was young and strong, and the pictures of his wife suggesting his past life with her, and the memories of his past fishing with Manolin. The setting time. It was set in the late 1940s. The book spans a period of five days. That is time. Uh, what the place? A place is a small fishing village uh, uh, near Havana in Cuba, in a boat on the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Motives? Motive defined as a word or phrase repeated throughout a work that takes some meaning through its repetition. Here we have a number of motives in the novel. The baseball and Jew de Mayo, they recurs again and again in the novel. And the dreams of the lions on the beach, they occur three times. And the life from death gets repeated in the story and at many levels. I finished. Now you must be able to analyze the characters, the themes, the symbols, and the style of the novel. And 
your assignment you will find in the attached file titled assignment 8.